Ross Miriam, 28th ranked player this year, playing Dredge. Ross had a couple players' championship appearances to his name. Has an uphill battle to get a third one. Right yes. now, not there on the standings. We start off the game with Ross winning the die roll. He's on the play at 7-1. Starts on Steam Vents, Faithless Looting. So draw up two. He finds a copy of Greater Gargadon. He said that he's really enjoyed the card in his deck. It's, it's high variable. That and Bridge from Below. They've been very good when drawn together, drawn apart. It's been a hit or miss sort of affair. So he puts an Arc Amoeba and Stinkweed Imp into the graveyard. Uh, Ross is using a method for displaying his graveyard that uh, we used to see a lot in Legacy. You just fan all the cards across, all the information is open, really easy. Well, difficult to grok if you're just approaching this, like what is going on? What are all those cards doing on the table? But uh, once you kind of have a feel for the stretch deck, it'll be a lot easier to figure out what's going on. Flooded Strand for Adam Dennison. He's going to start on Champion of the Parish. And that is off Temple Gardens. We go back to Ross. Now this deck's not going to, Ross is not going to dredge the deck as fast as its legacy counterpart, but it's, with this start, it'll be pretty good. We see Stinkweed Imp, and it's going to mill five, and what a five. Nice. Bloodgast, Conflagrate, Narc Amoeba, and Prized Amalgam. This is a phenomenal dredge for Ross. Yeah, those are four favorable cards to flip over. When we saw Todd on camera earlier, his dredges were nowhere near that good. So I said this is nothing like the Legacy version. I guess I need to correct myself. It's everything like the Legacy version. I don't know. The Legacy version might actually be winning on this turn. So <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're still right. Insolent Neonate is the play from Ross Miriam. He's going to sacrifice it immediately to discard and draw. So he discards Stinkweed Imp, and then he draws it. So a fancy uh, Tome Scour, I guess? Bridge from below, Narc Amoeba. Another Sting Queen Imp and a Dakmore Salvage. And with Garkadon in hand, this is uh, not bad. So now there's a bridge from below in the yard. This this just feels great. Yeah. Uh, you can't, How do we lose? You can't complain about this dredging. A second bridge would be excellent. Remember, Ross, this is turn two. I love this stuff. I, I hope he he's just going to go for the kill right away. <laughs> this is totally fair. Opponent getting an Oracle wording. I... I my guess is on bridge from below. That card's weird. Yes. When you see a card in the future site card frame, you know it's old enough that uh, <laughs> something may have changed. So, Copperline Gorge will put Bloodgast onto the battlefield. And one of the great ironies of Magic the Gathering. <laughs> future site, that's old school. <laughs> Greater Garganon is now suspended. So, Ross can sacrifice all of everything to remove counters. It's got a bridge from below, too. Just great. Keep in mind that prized amalgam on the end step, that guy's going to come into play because Ross put three things out of the graveyard. Let's do it. There's the 3-3. Three, three. He'll pass back, making a seven power and a suspending guy that turn. All in a day's work. A turn's work. <laughs> he paid for all of those things. Gavin is soul naming humans. See if you can counter this one, Thal Ross. Thalia's lieutenant. Good, too. Get, puts two counters on the champion of the parish. Uh, take three, maybe? I have to imagine yeah. there's going to be some zombies getting in the way here. I, uh, th this yeah. informs me that, uh, well, actually, Ross does not want to kill this creature in combat. Uh, because yeah, it would no, exile no, no. the bridge from below. Though right. he does get the free block, make a zombie by sacrificing the Narc Amoeba. Or yep. even just let damage happen. We'll see whether or not he sacked one to the Gargadon. Uh, it doesn't look like... I don't think he did. I think he just let it die in combat, opting not to sack to Gargadon. A lot of time, you want Gargadon to hang out on suspend for a while. So you just want, like... You'd pay one mana for an emblem that just says, you may sacrifice a creature? Ross has been saying he would like to have, like, a fifth and a sixth sacrifice <laughs> outlet. I think if you could just have a one-mana enchantment that said zero sacrifice a creature, creature he'd nothing. be very happy with that. Okay. He'll also sacrifice the Bloodgast for a zombie. Because this is neat. I might, have, might as well upgrade the Narc Amoeba while we're at it, too. Yep. Flying doesn't matter when the 2-2 can just attack into the 1-1. One, one. This so, is uh, great. You would lose the bridge again if he just uh, attacks into the 1-1. One, one. Interesting. Ross is going to dredge Dakmore Salvage instead of Stinkweed Imp. So presumably he doesn't have a land. Dredges Insolent Neonate and Mountain. 
Salvage goes into his hand. All right, things are slowing a little bit down for Ross here. He's going to have to fire up the Shriekhorn in his hand then, get, it, get things rolling again. Really get this engine humming with that Shriekhorn. Gosh, that card is just a delight. The backbone of many a constructed deck. Yeah, so here's a reasonable swing of uh, nine damage. And a chump block here would exile the bridge from Ross's graveyard. However, doesn't really do a lot now that all those zombies have been made. And also, the Gargadon can just oh. sacrifice the creature that the lieutenant blocks as well. Yeah. And now that Adam took all the damage, but Ross, yeah, sacrifice prize amalgam, make a zombie. It's going to come back at the end of this turn anyway. Red, red for Conflagrate. He's flashing that one back, discarding three. Discarding Shriekhorn, Stinkweed Imp, Faithless Looting. So three damage any way he chooses. He'll go... I don't know, all of it at Adam. Who, gosh. <laughs> He'll go <laughs> any which way. Champion of the Parish in the graveyard. Bridge from below should be exiled off that. Yeah, Ross will take care of that. Plays Dakmore Salvage as his last card. So there comes the Bloodgast back into play. And on the end step, Prized Amalgam will join it. And uh, Ross discarded a Faithless Looting off that. Conflagrate too, so he has two Lootings set up to go. Yeah, on the following turn, there's a few different ways, types of permanents that Ross can sacrifice to put the Gargadon onto the battlefield. With Denison down to eight, any blood nice. gas that get turned over and uh, triggered will have haste. Hard to imagine Ross not just winning on the following turn here. All right. Adam, now we will take his third turn. This, uh, and he, or he will not. He this, will scoop his cards. This game did not do a great job at showcasing how cool Adam's deck is. <laughs> Lance Bell, Lance Bell. He plays, some, Bell. He uh, plays some human cards. <laughs> <laughs> they attack and block and do things sometimes. Yep. Yep. Not that game. They attack and block just like Tutu Zombie Tokens. Well, all right. Adam Dennison finds himself in a hole after a quick game one. We're going to look at his sideboard, though. I'm, if you look at it, you'll, what you'll realize is that Adam was aware of this deck when he registered his list today. Yep. Uh, walk me through a sideboard because I think he's got a lot of cards that will play. Two rest in peace, clearly great. Those are for sure coming in. One surgical extraction that can also buy you a little bit of time, turn off a specific piece from the dredge deck. Depending on how things get flipped over on Ross's side, the surgical can actually be backbreaking, uh, though clearly not as good as rest in peace. Um, there's, there's some argument for Meddling Mage and Stubborn Denial. Yeah, I actually really like Meddling Mage. Um, keep in mind here that there's a lot of cards in Adam's list that, that aren't going to play. So Yeah. Uh, especially if he's, you know, a Faithless Looting perhaps could be named. I guess there's not too much that Ross casts out of the graveyard. This isn't Legacy Dredge where you name Dread Return. Right. Ross's value is happening in non-spell ways. Most right? of what Ross did, he suspended a greater, greater Gargadon. He okay, dredged some that. stuff. He can't blood gasted, he prized amalgam. Can't, can't do any of this. A meddling Mage was behind the turn one Faithless Looting. There's going to be some games is, where it's just kind of not a card. Is Faithless Looting the only spell that Ross actually cast that game? He flashbacked Conflagrate. That's actually worth meddling maging. Yeah. No, I'm going to back up. Yep. Conflagrate's really important to meddling mage. Yep, depending on how large he's able to make his creatures with uh, his lords, the meddling mirrors on Conflagrate could actually be quite significant. But that's about it. How do you feel about Lantern Scout or Selfless Spirit? Life gain is all right. The thing about it is that he's either ahead of what Ross is doing or he's behind, and gaining some life I don't think is going to turn that around. All right. So well, there'll be some play here, especially with Adam going first in game two. Well, going over to Ross's sideboard, um, he's got a full play set of Leyland of the Void. He's got Ancient Grudges, Nature's Claims, Nod of the Bones, Abrupt Decays, another Conflagrate, another collect a Collective Brutality, and then another, a Dark Blast. Conflagrate seems great here. Dark Blast, probably quite good. I assume that one's coming in. Collective br Brutality will probably trade with something. Kind of the issue is what Ross likes this card for is discarding cards. 
The yeah. non minus two minus two modes are kind of weak here, though I could see that one coming in. Uh, Abrupt Decay seems fine. And against any kind of beatdown deck, I do like bringing in Nod of the Bone. It's interesting he has Collective Brutality in his sideboard. Uh, it's a very powerful effect for this deck, but I, it feels to me like it would be a main deck card or not to, or you don't play it. Yeah, and uh, there's one thing about Dredge. This deck is still being figured out. You know, Ross has been talking about how there's already some main, cha main deck changes, specific things he wants he's going to be looking at, uh, he's not really sure of, and there's going to be matchups where Collective Brutality just doesn't really do much. Even if you had your pick of any of those three modes and weren't discarding a card, you might not do anything of value in certain games. Yeah. Players are going to get ready for game number two here. We're going to take a second and we'll talk about the Star Sea Games Creature Collection. So this is some of your favorite magic art that we have had both both on our, our what am I saying? All right, the Creature Collection that you've seen on the Game Night promos, as well as other creatures appear on playmats, sleeves, and player bundles, and they're available now for purchase. So the Young Buromancer, this is the one that it's been the game night promo here in August. It's, of course, Young Pyromancer. Uh, you can get that on a play mat. You can get that on your sleeves. You can get that on, on a deck box, just player bundles, tons of things here. So you can find these. We also have some selected art by Andrea Radek uh, also available. These are all starseagames.com slash creature collection. Um, you want to head there and check them. Check those out. They're all pretty great. Yeah, these are pretty awesome stuff. Whether you're a fan of fluffy animals or you're a fan of puns, you're a fan of cool art, there's, there's a lot to that you get delivered here. Such as the Fruit Bat. This one was not a uh, game night promo, but yet you can still get it, uh, this full art. I, I like this one quite a bit. He's just, he's just cute. This you know. is one of those things that is cute in a fantasy setting and horrific in reality. If you opened a watermelon and there was a bat inside of it, would you? What if it was a, a very contented bat? So if I open up a watermelon, the top two things I don't want to happen are one, the watermelon is full of bees, two, the watermelon is full of spiders. Um, oh, well, there bat, we go, not there. Bat is a potential number three. Um, it would just be singular bat. It wouldn't be full of bats. Yeah, it couldn't just, it, it could have maybe three or four bats. That's a huge watermelon you're just opening. Look watermelons are big. What are you talking bats about? Bats are bats are big too. See this fruit bat here. He's the size of most of the so watermelon. So if the problem is that the bat is so big that the watermelon can't fit multiple bats, maybe I would prefer bat. Uh, well, look at him. I, would, not, I would be more afraid of bat than spiders. He's not gonna bother you. Look, he's he's fully ate so much watermelon. He's just happy. He's probably gonna go take a nap. He'll be, I would rather that guy. he napped in somebody else's watermelon. Well. It could be someone else's watermelon. That's why they're available on the store. All right. All right. Both players have mulligan to six. We're going to go back to the match. You know, in Legacy, Dredge doesn't care when they mulligan. Um, I, that might just be true in Modern as well. In, mo in Modern, you definitely have to mulligan a good amount because there's just a bunch of stuff that's not working. <laughs> and you can start going off and stop um, much more often than you would in Legacy or uh, the, certainly in Vintage. The cards at the bottom of the barrel are a lot murkier in the modern deck. Yeah, there's nothing on the Shriekhorn level in Legacy. Hey man, Shriekhorn, not only does it mill you for one more than Tome Scour, you can also sack it to your Gargadon. It's perfect. It's just good deck building. Adam Dennison on the play, both players on the mulligan. So he starts off on stomping ground and just passes. Not actually too many one drops in the deck. He's got Noble Hierarchs, Champion of the Parishes, and Avacyn's Pilgrim. Ten one drops, none of them in the opener. Yeah, and I imagine that most of the games that Adam is winning, it's just with a critical mass, setting up things like big champion of the parish, big Thalia's lieutenant. If you don't have the champion, presumably the hand has either Thalia's lieutenant or Mayor of Abergrook. In this matchup, rest in peace, great thing to keep on. You know, we see these decks in modern, uh, always kind of this critical mass you're describing. You know, we've seen this four color humans deck. Sometimes we'll see slivers do well. Sometimes we will see allies do well. I feel like these decks are all doing relatively the same thing. It's They're just all critical. Merfolk. It's yeah. all just different merfolk decks. Ugh. That sounds like depressing when you put it that way. <laughs> I have a way of doing <laughs> that. Making good things sound boring. All right, Ross's <laughs> turn one is a Faithless Looting, discarding Prized Amalgam and Golgari Grave Troll. All right, we're setting up shop again. Well, well these lands can't cast Rest in Peace. Uh-oh. 
It is Cavern of Souls, naming human and champion of the parish for Adam Dennison. We're back to Ross, a dredge of six. Neonate, Grave Troll, Grave Troll, Amalgam, Bloodgast, Bloodgast, uh, Collective Brutality. So he's got a ton of dredgers, a second Amalgam, no way to get any of them back yet. Oh, there's a Faithless Looting in hand, so things could get pretty crazy with that double Grave oh, Troll Oh, gross. Bin. Okay, here's Grave Troll. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bloodgast is going to hit along with Gnaw to the Bone. How do I lose when I have all these Shriek Horns? <laughs> I mean, you're closer to Delirium. <laughs> I don't know. He draws a second Grave Troll and bins a third prized Amalgam. All right, this is actually quite good for Ross. All right. He has to discard two. He'll discard all of the Grave Trolls. So he milled himself for 12 there. Yeah, hasn't played a land. So here's a tapped Blood Crypt. Here's Blood Ghast, and he's got three zombie friends that are going to join him at the end of the turn. It's flavorful. Blood Crypt triggers Blood Ghast. And, and Ross goes mm -hmm. to a casual 11 power on the battlefield. I like creatures that you can cheat their mana, that their mana, anything that costs zero in magic. I like cards that cost zero. Generally pretty powerful. Look at these, all of Ross's things cost zero. He didn't pay for any of those. And it's like you just, he's walking into the creature store and just taking stuff off the shelves, <laughs> just, just just breezing by the cast register and says, these are all mine it's, now. It's that's, a, that's okay, right? It's a sweepstakes. He's just running down the aisle and throwing just, them in his cart. Whatever, you know, he doesn't even, he's not even looking at bothering to look at what it is. He's just saying, you know, blood gassed off this shelf, a zombie off this one, whatever. I'm just taking them all. Why'd you get all these three threes, Ross? They were free. And for Adam, on turn three, he will cast Rest in Peace. That would have been excellent on turn two. Yeah. You're looking a little late here. All right. Well, Ross has made 11 power. It had better be good enough to win because his deck is not really going to do anything after this point. He draws the fourth prized Amalgam. His only castable card in his hand, I don't even know if he has one. He's got a Narc Amoeba, but nope. no blue. He's got some, he's a mana confluence, so oh. uh, both of these blue creatures will be castable. Champion of the Parish trades with Bloodgast. Bloodgast will exile. Adam Dennison will take nine and go to ten. Now, if, you're, if I'm Ross, I uh, might go for Narc Amoeba here. What if some, some freak thing happens and Dennison just has Declaration in stone, right? Uh, though... It's probably going to be very difficult for Ross to win if that happens even without the fourth uh, prized amalgam. So, you know, whatever. At this point, uh, with Dennison at 10, even with a blocker, um, if Ross peels a blood gas, it'll have haste, and his attack will be lethal through one thing. This deck is sweet. Look at all these things Ross is doing. And interesting. So rest in peace on turn two would have been great for Dennison, but he yeah. was on the play. If he was on the draw, rest in peace is just bad on any turn. Reflector Mage from Denison puts the prized amalgam back in Ross's hand. Ross will untap with a bunch of 3 threes. Didn't pay for any of them. Here they, they all attack. Denison will chump block. Go to four. Does he have a... He does not have Supreme Verdict. Or, there's there's just know. no way you would respect Supreme Verdict out of a deck that casts Champion on uh, the parish. What if he Declaration and stoned him right here? How good would that have been? He doesn't yeah. have one in his list, but... But that would, have, that would have taught Ross a lesson. <laughs> Deck stone your prized amalgams, all four of them. Ross will play Narc Amoeba and Insolent Neonate. Adam will draw, but barring a phenomenal collected company this turn, he's going to die on the next attack. I don't even think that there is a collected company that does it. That's why I said it was phenomenal. <laughs> it's, it's so phenomenal that it, it finds cards even that are not in his deck. Um... I mean, Ross is cheating. Why, Why can't, can't I cheat? <laughs> yeah. So, so, so see, he should take a page out of Ross's book. He, he casts collected company. all of his creatures he on casts collected table. company, and then he should just, like, take, like, ten cards and just, like, pick all the creatures <laughs> and just put them all into play and be like, I, I play these. <laughs> okay? And then just, like, take some dice. Don't even, even if you don't have Thali Lieutenants, just, like, start putting dice on all of them. <laughs> you know, three on this guy, six on this one, and be like, all right, I, I block your things. And then attack with him immediately. Yeah. <laughs> As if they had haste. <laughs> Be like, oh, what? What? And then if Ross complains, he'd be like, I thought this is what the rules were. <laughs> I was just doing what you were doing. Collected company here. Yeah, looks at some creatures, throws them down, and it's Ross, Miriam, and Dredge, eight and one, finishing the day. And these are the kind of matchups where 
Dredge is just going to mangle you. If there's no combo finish in your deck, you're going to crush, crutch really hard on that graveyard hate, but it has to come down very quick. Yeah, I mean, Adam had the rest in peace in his opener. He mulled the six, and he didn't find a white source until turn three and was comically dead. Yes. Very, very dead. And well, if turn that turn around around though, if he has white source, it's turn two. If he was on the draw, he still loses thing, that same game. Same thing, yeah. yeah. It has to be turn two on the play. This is, it's scary. Now, it's not, boy, 